I like that. That's good. Hey, good morning, Restore Church. How are we? Hey, my name is Adam Barnes, and I'm so honored here to be with you today. I like where that was going. You guys caught on to that. Some of you know. Next time we play that music, you guys can just get that rolling, okay? All right. Cool. Hey, well, I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you for tuning us, tuning in online, as well as joining us here in person. And uh, I'm excited about what God has today for us. Um, and I just want to take a moment and lean in on something that happened during worship. I know one of the things that you may have noticed is this, 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 um, this sense where we can linger in, we can lean in in a moment. You feel this rise of like, oh man, something's happened. God's about to do something. We also heard a, a message from someone that felt an, an utterance from the Lord. And, um, and I just want to lean in on that for a moment if I can. And I just embrace that. I think it's important as a body, as a fellowship to embrace what God's speaks to us in moments, and, um, and, and the, the word that was brought both forth in this service as well as last service was dealing directly with our baggage, and I think it's a timely word for us as God's preparing us for greater days and greater things and a movement to happen, for revival to happen in our midst. <clears throat> What I, what I firmly believe is that we're not going to see this big tidal wave crush us rather than it being a movement that's already starting to occur. I, uh, I, I recently read an article about a documented wave that was like over 80 feet tall. And it, it was this rogue wave that went, went through the ocean and some buoys out in uh, Canada picked it up. And, and um, uh, their surrounding waves around it were a third of that size. So, so they were about 20 feet or so. Uh, and, it, and sometimes we're looking for this big, massive wave without realizing that God has already moved or the things are already happening and we've got to begin to see the 20 foot waves that are already occurring around us right now. So the testimony we heard of miracle of, of marriages being brought back together, of relationships being restored, of broken lives being healed, of people stepping into uh, into relationship with God for the first time. And I, I just want to speak to someone here who may be wanting to express their faith in a public way. And we believe in water baptism. And if you have a desire to express your faith in an outward public display uh, it, it, through the act of baptism, that we will have a baptism service. We've got a baptism tank right here. Uh, and, but it's something important that we value, we believe in, uh, we, we celebrate marriages, we celebrate wedding ceremonies and having a public uh, uh, display of, our, uh, of one's affection, of a couple's affection towards one another and commitment towards one another, and we also celebrate that. And perhaps you find yourself far away from God right now. I want to invite you to welcome home. Because I believe God wants to invite you to a place where you belong, where God heals brokenness inside your life, where it's a sense where you're home and a place where you're like, man, I, I feel so comfortable. My soul is receiving healing. My heart is being healed and restored. Something that has held me back is being loosened. Something that has bound my chains are breaking off. And I want to challenge you and encourage you that you get to be a part of God's movement on the earth right now. And so I do believe that it's getting gooder and gooder. I don't care what anybody says. I live by that. I believe that. I even have a hat that has a, has a, has a message that reminds me of that, of that testimony. I, I, that, there, there are some things in our lives where we've got to hold fast to what God says. We've got to hold on to the promises of God. And I've said this before, but I, I'll say it again. I believe we're in a season where God is answering promises and fulfilling prayers, right? I believe that right now is a season of answered prayers. So keep your eyes open for it. I want to begin to address something this morning. And I, 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 um, I mentioned last week my trip through uh, the airport and, uh, and the things that we went through. And we're in still this series called Baggage Claim. But I want to begin to talk to you a little bit about an issue that I find in the church. And it, it's a subtle issue. We don't like to talk about it. It's not commonly addressed. We'll, we'll kind of dance around the issue. But, but the reality of it is it's an issue in most of our lives. And I've got to confess it's been an issue in my life. I'm just being real. And, uh, and sometimes we, 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 we hold on to things that we ought not to, and God, and, and God says, hey, I want to take that baggage off. Would you just check that baggage in and let me handle it and let me work it out and let you have the freedom to, to proceed to the destiny I have for you? Okay? And so that's what I believe God wants us to do. We're going to talk about the issue of jealousy today. Mm, shoot, Pastor, I didn't come to service to hear about that. No, uh. 
No, we're going to talk about it today. Jealousy is sneaky. It's, 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 it's subtle. It's small. It's, 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 it's just kind of, it's like a purse. It's like this. It's just one of these things, you know, you know, you're allowed to have a couple bags when you go into the airport. You're allowed to have a couple things with you, um, and you can have a big luggage like this and check it in, or you could get a personal bag and a purse. In fact, you're allowed one personal item and, uh, well, you're allowed two personal items typically on a plane. Um, and so you commonly, uh, you'll have a, a backpack or another bag, and then oftentimes we'll find ladies carrying their, their purse. And so um, when I was in the airport after the TSA agent incident, you remember if you heard the service last week, you may understand I'm going through some uh, prayer and counseling for that issue, but um, I'm just kidding. The, I, 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 I saw a situation in, in, in the airport, and I, I, there was this, this lady in the airport that was standing near us, and um, she had her purse on, and then there was another lady in front of her that had her purse on. And she goes, mm, girl, I like your, I like that Gucci bag. What you got going on over there, girl? I like your hair. I like your, she, look at those nails. They're so pretty. And I, and I was like, what is going on over here? Like, they don't even know each other. Like, what is happening? And what I realized is, is this was a backhanded moment for a compliment. What I, what, I, what I recognized is that this lady was actually trying to, um, she was revealing what was going on in her heart was a, was a root of jealousy rather than building someone up. What was happening is, is this lady had her bag, and, and the more she commented on the, the, the Gucci purse and the fly hair and the, and the, and the nail paintings and the things and all the, the, whatever, her purse went from here to here, and she was kind of hiding it away. Because there was a comparison, there was a difference between her bag, which happened to be some no-name brand, and the other bag, which happened to be something that she could identify and wanted. Girl, if I had that, woo, you know what I mean? Just go on and on and on and on. And sometimes in our journey of faith, we do the same thing. In our lives, we do the same thing. And God says it's time to get rid of the bags the little subtle bags that may be ensnaring us, that may be tripping us up, that may be holding on to, and one of those bags is jealousy. So today we're going to talk about that. Jealousy ruins relationships. It ru ruins connection. It, it distorts vision. It distorts ideas or concepts. It even distorts the idea that God is working on your behalf. And Jesus offers restoration if we leave some of these bags behind. One of the things I learned in the army real quick is that even this little bag held out like this for a long period of time could feel like a 100-pound sack. Try it. I dare you. Take a non-filled purse for two hours. Hold your arm out straight just like this. And you, that, two, that ounce of a bag will feel like ounces you will not be able to carry if you hold your arm out like this. I think that's often what jealousy does to us. We, we, we're holding on to it, and we don't realize the weight that it is because when you initially look at it, it's, it's little. It's, it's, it's subtle. And I think sometimes that jealousy can ruin relationships. Now, jealousy and envy are pretty closely connected. If you, we sang about both of those two words or talked about those two, both of those two words today. Jealous is a feeling... Um, is feeling threatened that someone will take what is yours. Envy is feeling resentful that someone has or is getting something that you want or feel is rightfully yours. I want to challenge us a little bit more. As I was digging in, there was a, there was a few zingers of, a, of, of quotes that I just, man, it just hit me, and I want to share them with you because I believe that God will start prepping the field of your heart um, like he did mine even in dealing with some of these. Jealousy is a form of hatred. Built upon insecurity. There was not enough mm in that moment. That statement, if you think about that statement, that was oh, powerful. Jealousy is when you count someone else's blessings instead of your own. Rick Warren said this, anytime you feel jealous or envious, you reject your uniqueness. It's a criticism of God's plan for you. Oh. Whoa. So let me, let me share this story with you. 
There's this, this story of a, of a merchant, and he was um, in this competitive relationship with another fellow merchant, and he was, uh, uh, they were, you know, trying to sell things and find treasures and uh, take long voyages, and one, this one merchant was walking along the beach one day and found a bottle, and he opened the bottle, and, and, and out came a genie, and the genie said, your wish is my command. But wait, whatever you wish will be for whatever you wish will be given doubly to the to the one that you envy the most. And he said this, okay? I wish to be blind in one eye only. No, 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 no. Yeah, that oh, oh, that was the feeling that I was like, "What? Why pastor? Why are you telling that story? That's rough." Because that's a real depiction, that's a real uh, feeling about what jealousy really does produce in our lives. But oftentimes we overlook it by what can sound pretty or look nice. It's really, it's really gut-wrenching. It's really like, seriously? Ah. Oh. You wish that you were, I understand the details of this story. Like the guy saying he wishes he was blind so his enemy could be doubly blind in both eyes so that he would have the upper hand in his, in his business. I get it. I understand where that's coming from. That doesn't sound cool. But I think it's the same thing when we really get to the root of our, in our hearts of what jealousy does and how it produces things in our lives. It'll begin to show. Envy and jealousy can enter, uh, enter our lives and when a new person enters your friend group and you start wondering when you're going to be replaced. Or how about your, your peers uh, uh, and, and when somebody you work with closes on a business deal and receives a promotion that Envy says that it's something you should have received? Or how about when a teammate has a great game and Envy says that you're going to lose the spotlight? We get jealous and envious all over the place. Church members get jealous and envious we get en envious of attention and relationships. And one of the things that has escalated jealousy and envy in the church world has been social media. Now I'm comparing my backstage to someone else's front stage, the polished version. The version of them that is looking real good with filters and looking real good in the moment while I'm comparing to the moment when I wake up and my hair's funny and my, my breath stank. <laughs> See, I, I think we often, we often have this idea in our own lives where our, we'll start comparing things around us to get an understanding and place and value. James chapter 3, verse 14 begins to warn us. It says this, But if you harbor bitter envy... And selfish ambition in your hearts. Do not boast about it or deny the truth. That hits two groups of people in this room, which probably references all of us. There are those that may boast, be like, yeah, I got it. That's me. And there may others in this room that say, nope, I, I, I don't. Scripture's warning us in our hearts. Such wisdom does not come from heaven, but it's earthly, unspiritual, and of the devil. Envy is earthly, unspiritual, and of the devil. Where there is envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. This is some serious language or weight to an issue that we think is just personal baggage. This is so, some serious, some serious heartache, some serious moments here that's being exposed to something that we overlook and don't deal with. Craig Rochelle um, defined envy this way. He said, envy is resenting God's goodness in others' lives and also ignoring God's goodness in my own life. See, sometimes when I look at other people and I see what God is doing in their life, I start saying, why, God, aren't you doing it in mine? 
God, why are you doing X, Y, Z in this person's ministry and I don't see that in my own? Why, are, why God, are you allowing this person to experience this level of blessing while I'm not walking in that level of blessing myself? Why is this person's marriage seem to be all that in a bag of chips and I know what a rotten scoundrel person they are? Why, why, why? And we start comparing left and right. And I, we start ignoring then the things that God has brought and deposited, the good things that he's given to us in your own life. And he's talked about all over, all over scripture. Cain was envious of Abel. In Genesis chapter four, Rachel envied Leah. Leah envied Rachel. These are biblical figures. You know the story of Joseph and his brothers. He had a coat of many colors and, and uh, his brothers were envious of Joseph because he was the favored son and he got this special coat and they did horrible things. So that was in Genesis 37. King Saul was envious of David, a shepherd boy, but he has God's favor and relationship with God and God called him friend. Lucifer envied God. Who's Lucifer? Lucifer is the angelic name for Satan. It, Satan was, is a fallen angel, and he wanted, he envied what God had. He wanted what God had. It wasn't his, and he, in his heart, he was jealous after the things that weren't his. Isaiah chapter 14 tells us that. Scripture reminds us over and over again that the chief priests and religious rulers were envious of what Jesus, of Jesus and his influence on those in the community. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 30 says, A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. God is about restoring shalom peace to the bride of Christ while removing anything that will rot her bones. And envy has got to get out. Jealousy has got to get out of the church. I'm not in competition from the church down the road, Elevation Church, or any other church out there. I'm not in competition with them. Now, as I was preparing for this message, I kept thinking about this, this, this statement that some people may be wrestling with. And if it's you, just know this, that I'm... That, that sometimes when we talk about uh, God with our scripture, it says he's a jealous God, and we sing about uh, 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 he is jealous for me. Uh, there, there, sometimes that idea or concept that God is a jealous God comes in. Well, I want to I wanna tell you, it's, jealousy is not wrong when it involves an exclusive relationship, meaning, it, um, I'll give you an example. God is jealous for his people and their worship. It's his. He's created it. He's deserving of it. He's worthy of it. It's, the, it's, it's his. So it's not, we're not, it's not the same weight or language or bent as if it is a sin. Does it make sense? Okay. The same way, as a husband, I may be jealous for my wife's affection. Why? Because we're in covenant, we're in relationship together, and when things interfere in that relationship, I may be jealous for that attention. It's mine. I'm, it's rightfully mine. It's because it's an exclusive relationship. And so I, I want to I, I, I um, I, I just bring that clarity for a moment because um, nowhere does Scripture imply that God has sinned at all. Okay. I want to I begin to start to work through this in this direction. The Scripture is very clear in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. It says, we dare not... We, do not dare to classify or compare ourselves. And I think this is often where we start to get in trouble as believers, where we start comparing, well, you have a, but you can hear from God and I can't, and you can, you get speak in tongues and I can't, and you get, you had that supernatural experience and I can't, and you have confidence on the stage and I can't, and you're a pastor and I'm not, and this, and there's this competition and comparing that starts to enter the body of Christ. And I want to challenge us that that ought not to be the case. In fact, Galatians chapter six, six verse four says, each one should test his own actions without comparing himself to somebody else. And so I want to I want to challenge us as a church that we've got to be a people that can celebrate God's goodness to others and embrace God's goodness to us. This is important. This is important. 
So I want to I want to take for a moment. Last week we talked about the seven things that expose bitterness in our lives, and I want to give you some some three steps. And there's two things. If you can't celebrate someone else's success, then maybe there's an issue of jealousy in your life. If you can't see God's goodness in your own life, maybe the real reason is because you're jealous, not because He's not acting, and you got your eyes on something that is not what you, is you're meant for you. When you're looking at someone else's mantle or someone else's blessing or someone else's status with someone else's influence, perhaps there's an issue. But it could be a fellow coworker, and you're looking at them, why are they getting this promotion and why are they getting this or that? It could be an issue of jealousy that we got to expose and deal with. So number one, if you're taking notes, this is the, the Holy Spirit wants to begin to expose the jealousy. Some of the issues, this, when that lady had her purse, one of the things I noticed is it started sliding back. We're going to hide it. It's so easy to hide. Sometimes in the church world, the, the, the idea of jealousy is so easy to hide. It's so easy to like, we, we try to spiritualize it for a moment. It's sneaky. It's like an undercover agent. There's this, there's this it really looks like jealousy on the surface. Sometimes it's mask and religious indignation. In fact, Judas uh, was jealous when he criticized Mary for wasting expensive oil. In Matthew 27, it talks about the Pharisees being uh, envious of Jesus' popularity with the people. So I wanna, I wanna challenge us. Sometimes we gotta, we gotta do this, expose jealousy, admit it, be honest. Be raw, honest. That's the way we get through it. That's the way we get healthy. There's a, there is a root of jealousy that's taking place. And, it, and, and sometimes, sometimes rather than admit I'm, a, I'm jealous of his position or I'm envious of his popularity, we try to justify those negative feelings by manufacturing um, a spiritual fault or flaw. I'll give an example. He might be a strong leader, but don't you think he's a bit mere materialistic? I mean, have you seen the car he's driving? He might be a great singer, but I sense in my spirit that th she's not really genuine. She, she seems a little bit prideful or superficial to me. She's not really spiritual. Perhaps the real root to some of those issues are more led by a heart issue of, of jealousy than they, are, uh, than they are actual discernment. And sometimes in our lives we think we're wise and we got discernment going on, and really it's a root of jealousy happening, and God wants to take that thing by the root and pluck it out. So we got to recognize jealousy that's hiding it, uh, itself in your life and recognize it for what it is. Call it out. Call a spade a spade, right? Okay. Number two, get your eyes off your brothers and sisters. I've got four kids, and some things that happen in my house are like sometimes there's issues where, the, where um, one child is, is, it has their eyes on their sibling and what they got. They, they got a bigger scoop than I did. They're sitting where I wanted to see, sit. This, they, they got that, and I didn't get it. There's this issue that we constantly see in, in, in a family because sometimes we're so focused on what somebody else has or somebody what somebody else got that we're not actually... Uh, embracing the goodness that we have ourselves. So get our eyes off our brothers and sisters and get our eyes focused on Jesus because he's the giver. He's the, he, he's the one who, who bestows blessing. I want to I want to I want to say this for a moment that sometimes sometimes if we just keep our eyes on Jesus and really begin to embrace what love is like I remember um, listening to a friend of mine Caleb Hire say this he said um, pray for patience it's the first thing that love is and that blew my mind when I began to hear that I was like whoa and so I started praying for it I, I changed my mindset and then I started praying through the other things that love actually is to let it begin to speak to me let it begin to mold me let it become let begin to shape my heart so that I, I look a little bit more like Jesus. So I challenge you to get your eyes not on your brothers or sisters or comparing what other people are going through. And then the last thing I want to I want to begin to challenge you with this is is to move in an opposite spirit. So sometimes we, we're moving in what we think is, uh, sometimes we move with jealousy and we actually need to become, move in the opposite, in the opposite way. See, envy seeks to isolate, it seeks to separate, it seeks to cause division and dissension. And Jesus 
constantly spoke about the power of overcoming evil through moving in the opposite spirit. I'll give you an example. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who curse you and pray for those who mistreat you. I'm not talking about moving in an opposite spirit that, it, that, um, that is of this world. I'm talking about operating in this power of the Holy Spirit, which is opposite to the spirit that is trying to influence your life. The, 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 uh, the jealousy, the fear, the, the bitterness, there's things inside of us that try to influence our thoughts and ideas and anxieties. We need to move opposite of that don't do not overcome evil don't do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good some of you may be the kind of person that thinks that the grass is greener somewhere else and sometimes I, my, my mind goes that way but I want to challenge you if you have the idea or the thought that the grass may be greener on the other side perhaps you got to start watering your own grass Perhaps you got to start nurturing the things that God's given you and recognize that God's really blessed you. He's given you good gifts. He's given you a calling. He's speaking to you. I'm telling you, if you get in his word, he's speaking to you. Some of you are struggling. Some of you struggle because you're like, I can't hear God's audible voice. Yes, you can. I'm telling you, listen to me. Just open up scripture and start reading out loud. There is the audible voice of God right there. I just hope it's Ecclesiastes 3. I didn't. Okay. There's a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to tear down, a time to build, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, a time to gather them. I'm telling you, there's time. And God is dealing with things right now in this time so that you can run the race you're called to. So would you stand with me for a moment? We're going to dive into some more worship here. And this is an opportunity in our services where we get to actually respond to this, to this moment. Whether it's, it's dealing with jealousy or bitterness or other relational issues that you may have in your life. We all got baggage. We all got it. And sometimes we need a partnership and prayer to help us work through it. Or, or maybe there's other things that are burdens on our mind and our hearts. And we're just weighing down with weariness. Or maybe we've got friends we want to pray for. Or loved ones that need, he, need a touch from the Lord. Or there's a healing that you really want to go after. There's folks all around this room. There are uh, prayer, prayer partners who want to pray with you. And we want, to, we want to pray with you. We believe in the power of prayer. But I would encourage you in this moment to press in. I believe God wants to uh, help you in these moments to rid baggage in your life. So that we can steward the revival that's coming so that we can restore so that we could steward a movement i don't believe that god's restored restore um or re is restoring restore so that we just stay restored i believe we're called to actually restore other churches communities and nations okay all right I want to pray over you, and we're going to dive into more worship. Thank you, the Father, for what you're doing in this service. I pray your blessing upon each person. May we, may we receive all that you have and not keep our eyes on what our brothers and sisters have or don't, and what we don't have, but keep our eyes squarely focused on you. May you be, receive the honor and glory. And God, we, we thank you. We celebrate you. We turn our affections towards you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship together.